hands. I want to see some early pressure. I want to see some roams. I want to see him getting alongside Canavi to try and force the issue. Canavi's been opened up here. Can work in Zika's favor, can work in JDG's favor, but they still need to take down BLG in this best of three. Let's see, JDG 1-0 up right now. They're 4-1 on the scoreboard and they want to make it five. Oh, Magical journey to start this one off. They've snuck into the jungle. Nobody on BLG will be aware of this cheese. They are though. Thresh was able to spot the portal. They know they're in here. Oh, Jin Zhao's gonna let them know. Give them a little tap. Put the Guardian and force them away. Big news here though is they did get the ward down. Kanavi will spot Meteor's path and that it's about to be a camp and a half behind. So Kanavi will hit that level three first and go up towards the top lane, try and force Kingen out of lane on this Olaf if he starts in the blue. Otherwise, great setup as well on this bottom side. Lu Mao can poke early against Jin Zhao and Shinmo, get them low for Kanavi coming in. I love that you could see in the inventories as they go for that invade there, Loken still had the Black Spear because they didn't have time to go for that play. Obviously, it takes quite a while to connect the Black Spear to your support. And realistically, when you're trying to make a cheese play like that, you don't have time. Kanavi starting on this top side, opposite end of the spectrum from Meteor. So I'm looking to see how he moves through here. This says to me, I'm looking towards you down the mid lane to help or down towards the bottom side. Loken and Lumao already with the push pressure, so going to be looking to bounce that wave back and potentially set up something for the Silas jungle. We'll have to see if they can set Kanavi up for success here. He's going to be more, he's going to be up on the top side of the map to start things off, getting his Krugs, and then you'd expect moving down to the bottom half. But now with this Ezreal in the bottom lane, you mentioned it during the draft, not the strongest in these early game skirmishes, purely because you have to go for the tier in your build pack. ELG are going to give up everything in this early game. They can't fight for dragons because Kanavi does so well in these early skirmishes alongside the Lucian, as well as this Callista, who will have complete objective control with the Rend. JDG will have free reign to pick up this dragon, to move it towards Rift Herald, and then start this snowball going and continuing this play pattern of snowballing out of control. The BLG, I mean, we've seen them give up objectives before. We've seen them happy to concede a little bit in the early game. But the problem is, that's what we saw in game number one. It didn't do anything for them. They weren't really able to achieve anything later on either. So it feels like I don't know, maybe this Israel isn't the pick. We'll have to wait and see. Jin Zhao is certainly a capable player, certainly has the mechanics for it. But can you afford to fall behind against a team like JDG that want to snowball, that want the early lead? That's how they find their wins this season. Let's see how JDG approach it though. Because right now, Kanavi's gone for a full clear. So be looking to back before having any influence on the map. Ooh, cheeky little hook onto Loken. Guardian is going to mean that basically doesn't take any damage and it's just going to be a huge amount onto Shimo. Not a trade they're looking to take. There's a, a, an argument either way for the Bard in this lane if you want to take the Electrocute and go for the full poke or go for the Guardian where in these situations there's a stray hook or a random Mystic Shot that can come through. Having that extra bit of safety to turn the trade in your favor can work out quite well. And I think as well playing against such a safe lane with the Ezreal Thresh you're not really going to achieve all too much with the electric. It's going to be very difficult to get any of that to stick to your opponent anyway. So why not play a little bit safer and have a bit more of the defensive plays available to you? So, so first backs have come in for both junglers. They're now entering back into their own quadrants of the map. The ward is there for BLG on the top side, just up towards the Krugs. So they'll spot Kanavi and know that he is on the top side. This potentially could signal to Meteor to try and make something happen on this bottom side because there's quite a bit overextended. Yeah, there's no ward in the tri brush either. We'll get Caretaker Shrine out in the river. I'm not sure that that's going to spot him out though. As we do see him roaming towards this area, I don't know if he's going to be able to make a play though. Now you can see both Luma and Loken have now got wards in the brush, so they were aware Meteor's going to be down on this side of the map. When all said and done, both teams backing away. With Meteor moving up towards the top side, though, Kanavi on the bot 
You should be able to turn towards this dragon whenever they really feel like it. And Harvey will be able to clear away his chickens and then move over towards the bottom side of the map. <laughs> the portal combat, let's go! <laughs> Shinmo and Lu Mao battling it out. Shinmo desperately. Uh, Shinmo! Oh, what are you doing? How's the flash? That's an ignite for a flash. You take those trades. Shinmo was trying to freeze the wave so Jin Chao could get to it. And that was perfect I mean, by Lu Mao to punish. He did it though. He got the freeze at the end of the day. It's a lot to burn for the freeze. I mean, look, like, if they can hold on to this, they're in good spot. But overall, this should just be broken by Loken in the next few moments. They can push in towards the terror, have the bounce back anyway, and then still go towards the strike. As an AD carry, this is what I expect of my support. You should be As willing support, to put your life on not the line. A not going to happen at any point in time. Burning my flash and having to back early is not how I want my early game to go. All I'm saying is, Shinmo's higher elo than you are, Doctor. So, the evidence... Well, Lou Mel was looking a little bit more like the higher elo player in that same scenario. <laughs> True. True. But, you know... <laughs> you got me there. I'll, I'll take... Yeah, that's my <laughs> counter-argument, and I'm leaving it at that. I'll take Shinmo any day of the week, if it means I get a minion wave. It's not really about the win, it's about how many CS you had at the end of the game. Fofo's looking a little bit lower when it comes to the CS count after that. Well, should be a little bit lower after Yigo sends half a Cully into him. Now though, Loken. Loken has found himself in a one versus three. The rest of the team taking a magical journey to get here. The teleport will come on through. Zoom out here, him up a little bit. Ultimate Skalor, knock up onto two. And this is big damage from the horn, but he's gone too far. Kingen has to flash away. Kanavi trying to follow on as 705 exhausted by Fofo and the gang. And they collapse onto him for the first blood. 705 had the flash, but couldn't get to a wall for safety. And BLG, even with Kingen having the flash away, come out the better for that trade. We thought they'd have control of this early game, but mispositioning from Loken and burning the cleanse causes JDG to run amok and BLG to pick up the dragon. I feel like you've lied to me here, Dagda. You told me that the Maokai, that the Ezreal, they were too slow, they would concede the dragons, but BLG will not be moved. They want to fight. It's JDG who should have been moved. Loken was trying to go 1v3 against everyone rather than allowing Meteor and Code to pass away. They go back in towards the dragon and pick up the objective. Reed coming out from the JDG bottom laner. You'll see it here. 1v3 burns the cleanse early where nobody's in position to help out. Loken below half health can't enter these fights for Fear of Shinmo. They call the Forge God and Fofo in just a few moments. So what should have been a 5v5 in favor of JDG ends up being a 4v5 with realistically 705 really having an answer in this fight apart from adding one to the death column. Yeah, when you compare Kingen's impact there and 705's impact, it's dramatically different. 705 TPs in and dies. Kingen gets the Forge God knock up onto two, gets a follow up knock up onto two, and then flashes away to safety. Very nicely played. This allows Kingen to pick up the Bramble Vest in the top lane as well. So now this matchup that is heavily 705 favored comes a little bit easier for the Orn. Still Aatrox favored, but at least will allow him to go up and pick up a bit more of this CS for himself. Loken in the bottom side as well has finished those boots, so this Callista is in full leaping around mode. Full swing, the martial poise going to suddenly be a benefit rather than a negative now for the Callista. And off the back of that, with a dragon in their pockets, they are going to be 100 gold down. So if JDG can keep this 100 gold lead for another. Five minutes and 30 seconds, they'll have a 100% chance to win. JDG trying to make sure that that's not going to be the case, though. We'll start to get work on these tower plates done. And with that, I'm sorry for you, Munch, but 120 gold will go over in favor of Loki in a few moments, and JDG will take that gold lead back. They were the ones with the gold lead. That's what I said. Here we go. Meteor's going in. Kanavi's been found a box to lock him on in, and Yagao, he's bitten off way more than he can chew. Or has he actually? Finds one kill onto Shinmo. Now Meteor wants to chase, but the magical journey will pull everyone to safety. It's one for one. So JDG still trading back and forth in the kills. The turret plates going across to Callista, however. So two plates go over to Loken. 
now starting to ramp up a bit quicker than this Ezreal is. So mid game again should be going to JDG. But we've seen the way JDG have been playing these fights. For the team fighting team we were bringing in, team fighting has not been looking so hot. Just, yeah, here we go. It's a flashing game from Meteor. Look, so, right, Kanavi goes in. Not sure why. They had vision that there was no buffs up or no camps up there for them. Looking to get some vision, looking to move across to that red buff, but doesn't have the backup of anyone in JDG and goes down very quickly. Kanavi had a ward on the crooks of Meteor. He sees the recall. He knows that he's safe to start. This Rift Herald up in the top lane. In the meantime, his jungler, uh, his top laner, sorry, of 705, will be able to get himself a tower play up against the likes of this orb. Shinmo realizes his mistake going down towards his bottom side, now trying to correct it, but Silas is already taking that Rift Herald. And Lumao just waiting for somebody to check this one. He's going to have priority, he's going to be able to clear the vision, and that's going to be Kanavi taking the Herald. Too little of an answer and too late from BLG. Not sure if Kanavi wants to stick around for this ward, though. Might have to burn Flash because of that. No, oh, never mind, I forgot he's Silas. He is Silas. That's going to mean that his abductive scone will get him away over the wall and onto his crook. So nicely done by Kanavi. Takes the objective with basically no answer from the side of BLG. That's a good amount of damage onto Yigao. Yigao, feeling the brunt of this, but both of these AD carries are now working their way up towards that Blade of the Rune King. And when this does come online, objectives like the Sparring, like these dragons are gonna fall very quickly to the double max health damage. Kanavi tosses this down in the top lane. And the call of the Forge God to try and force the issue here. Brittle proc. Kanavi nearly dies. That's the flash away. A couple of plates will be taken though. That tower very low now. Meteor was hovering on the wings. They spotted him on a ward just beside the Grom pit. So not wanting to go too far. 705 though needs to be careful here. Meteor wants to find a way into the lane, but the ward spots him out. 705 respecting. Even though they're double tank, Orn is an assassin, so he can still be killed. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure if that statement is 100% correct at some points, but this time around, yes, Kingen can definitely go down. 705 and Kanavi are looking to try and find these skirmishes, but haven't been given the opportunity to do so. Lumao, going to be trying to posture like he wants to fight for this dragon, but he's outnumbered for now. Just realize the build on Yigo. He's gone for an early edge of night to try and stop this burst that's coming through from Fofo. It's not the end of the world. You can use the lethality a little bit on Yigo, but it does delay you hitting that mid-game spike we were talking about. Yeah, you want to get that Blade of the Rune King, ideally, can RV. Walks away and gets himself a Guardian Shield. He's going to step up pretty aggressively for this ward. But I guess he's just not afraid of Meteor. He's really not fearing the damage out of the Maokai. Honestly, you can't really blame him. And go back in onto this dragon. They have the Callista, remember the Ren, so they can secure this objective. And with the Orn ultimate coming out from Kanavi, they can comfortably grab a drink. The cooking show is now complete with Kanavi pulling out the Orn ultimate that he made earlier on. Bijin Jail, though, struggling under this bottom turret. A lot of members from JDG here. Yeah, that Ezel is not going to do much to clear the wave just yet, mate. And Jin Zhao is all but doomed. Kanavi grabs himself that kill, and now some plates in the bottom lane. BLG were forced out through topside with folk over Meteor after the Dragon. Free play for them on the bottom side of the map, and JDG come collect their dues. Won't be able to get the turret off of that. Loken clears away those minions, and he'll be able to get his recall off now. We are 45 seconds away, Doctor, from the 15 minute mark. And JDG have a gold lead. We talked about it at the start of the series. They have a 100% win rate when they have a gold lead at 15. And a lot of that gold lead is coming from the plates they've managed to pick up. 300 for the Aatrox, 300 for the Callista, and a little bit of sprinkled over there for Kanavi as well. JDG have done a good job of making sure that they're putting pressure across the map. Now with top and bottom lane low, it feels like it's just waiting gold to be picked up by JDG. And with next Rift Carol coming up in about <laughs> two minutes. Wow, <laughs> no, I love it. I love the sass coming out from this bot. He gets hooked up by Shinmo and he's crying with laughter at the feeble attempt of keeping the water alive. 
Okay. Sometimes you just gotta try, but sometimes you're gonna get laughed out of four. Anyway, Kanavi, back on this top side though, looking to see if you can make the play. I'm keeping my eyes on where Yagao is going though, because he's moved his way over towards this blue buff. Potty might have been moving up to try and help 705 in the top lane. But because the early roam is coming through from Fofo, he's the one in trouble. 705 pops the world and uh, has to flash away from the knock up there. Meteor. Maybe could go for a dive. They're not going to pull the trigger just yet. Now the question will be how does Kanavi answer? How do Kanavi answer? How does Igao answer? Looks like potentially calling Lumao up to the mid lane is it. But again, JDG having these split calls, not wanting to commit. Logan will take bot terror though. JDG get the first tower of the game. They've got a 100% win ratio when they do that. That means we're up to 200% win oh ratio for goodness. JDG. Did they get first blood or was that BLG? I don't remember. Look, it was a long time ago. It doesn't really matter. It's JDG a whole bunch of win rate. are trying to move in here. Well, Logan just works his way on the bot lane turret. Callista's not even that great at taking towers, but I guess when you've got this much free time on your hands, you know, you can start a new hobby or you can just go take bot lane tower. Now they're in trouble on the side of BLG. Bot lane tower is soon going to fall. Bottom lane tier one has gone already. And JDG with the likes of 705 and Kanavi, who can steal away some of these big ultimates like the Maokais, like the Horns, can easily set up a dive towards this mid lane turret. Wave clear isn't that strong for them if Fofo isn't there. <laughs> Take Kanavi. that, Wolves! Take that! Kanavi is not messing around with these ultimates. He's going to use the True Shot Barrage just to clear away his wolves and scout out the enemy chickens as well. But he did have uh, a ward over there, so I don't think he achieved all too much. But the Baron now going to be spawning on the map in three minutes' time. So the second Herald, if they want it, has a very thin timeline of being able to be grabbed. This is why they've started to do the swap a room. Yeah, Gale was in the top side. He, well, never mind. He was supposed to stay up here because the Rift Arrow's there. You got 705 and the teleport in the bottom side. All makes self, <clears throat> all makes sense in the world. But now it doesn't because he goes back away. Will mean that they're not going to go for this straight off the bat. Gives BLG the opportunity to get this top wave back in the favor a small bit. Rotating to get vision on this Rift Arrow if they do so, please. It looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. Yagao with the weirdest Lucian build I've ever seen. Edge of Night into Hex Drinker into BF Sword. He's going all kinds of directions and he's king of the tier two items at this point, but we'll see how they're going to be able to contest this Herald with his Meteor starting this one off. Immediately back in a way because there's a lot of pressure going towards this mid lane right now. We said it, if Fofo is up in the top side, they don't have a huge amount of wave clear apart from the True Shot Barrage. Meteor trying to solo down the Rift Herald will be spotted by Kanavi. Got to bear in mind 20 seconds until the Drake's back up as well. Kanavi though, he's got his eyes set on this Herald. Everyone is here from both teams. Kanavi takes a good chunk of damage which will force them back and potentially over towards this mid lane turret instead and rush that one down. So Meteor gets himself this Herald. Does the rest of BLG, oh, what a trouble. I mean, he's too far away at that point for you to ever follow up on it, but in the meantime, Dragon has been started, and I'm not sure this trade is worthwhile. A Herald for a second Drake over towards JDG. We could have a fight on our hands as Kingen. Gonna get denied by the Tempered Fate, and now he's knocked up. Now he's CC'd in place and taken on down. Great start to the fight by JDG. I don't think it's gonna cause any more troubles for JDG with the as you said, the Cosmic Radiant, or not Cosmic Radiant, Separate Fate keeping them in check. Now they're backing away. 705, move towards the bottom side. They want to take that tier two. And bear in mind that Loken already weakened it up earlier on. There's no one to respond in that bottom side right now for the side of BLG. I think 705 might be able to just finish this one off, although Fofo is on the move. Has to be careful. You can see where he's positioned. Well, was positioned is behind the creeps, which is where I much preferred because it could be a cheeky trouble bubble that comes over the wall. There's Bofo showing. We'll yeah. back away, though. I was getting a little bit too excited. He couldn't push it quite in time. There was a minion wave in the way. I wasn't sure if Yagel was going to join him, but I think that would have been too big of a target for BLG to ignore. If you picked off 705 and Yagel right now, they might have been able to turn that into a lot more. This is a fantastic play from Lou Mel. And what we talked about in Champ Select, the ability for the Temper Fate to interrupt this Orn is so big. Then you just steal it away as Kanavi and turn it right back at BLG. Tankless, ultless, JDG win that fight. 
Loking just going to start to hammer away at the tower in the mid lane. There's one going down in the top lane as well. JDG really starting to be the ones with complete control of this game. Clearing vision on Baron. You always have to respect the Baron pressure when you have a Callista on the enemy team. Rift Herald is still available for Meteor though. They could look to try and use this again to bait out JDG into these awkward calls and awkward situations. It's actually interesting to see BLG back with this Rift Herald because this was something we praised them for at the start of the split was how well they used these Rift Heralds. They were pushing an 80% control rate over that objective. Now though, as these this series, uh, this split has gone on, these series are getting away from them, it's dropped to about a 64%. So this series again will push that further down, but one in Meteor's back pocket will at least net them some reprieve on that stat. The Colonel fancies JDG right now, and I've got to say, tending to agree with him with the way this game has been going so far. The Maokai jungle is still not convinced, and King and has to flash away very early. Culling, not doing a whole heap of damage though. He's 705 diving underneath the tower. He's knocked up, but he has the sustain available despite that Bramble Vest. Brings down his blade and takes a kill. All AD, apart from the Bard, will at least let King and survive a bit longer, but it doesn't matter. They get the tower. Yigel is now pushing in, and in the mid lane, the Rift Herald's going down, but they're training for an in hit. <laughs> and then they can temp and fight the tower anyway. Oh my days. They're, like, PLG, JDG are more to than happy to take this trade. It's going to be the tower going down, but it's traded for an in hit tower. This was trades BLG were making at the start of the split. Now it's being turned back around. Cool. I don't care about this mid tier two. You've just lost the bottom inhibitor. Yigao gonna still be sticking around. Kingen has respawned finally, but I don't think Kingen can just kill Yigao straight up. He's got an edge of night on top if, of everything if I'm else. Yigao, I'll happily give my life in this bottom lane. Yeah. I don't care. Like with Baron up, getting that bottom lane in him is so much more important. Kingen does have a lot of armor, so Yigao definitely can't kill the Orn. He's just gonna look for a minion wave in the meantime. You'll oh, get him, King, and don't worry. I you love keep this. tickling him. I love this from Yigao. He's just like, you know what? Give me that bonus minion wave. <laughs> I'm just gonna waste as much time as possible. Kills himself to the Bramble Vest in the end. But you know what? That was basically a victory lap for Yigao. He just got a 22 minute in him. That was so funny. Oh, I love this game. Can I be being jumped on though underneath the tower? Ganavi walks away happily, and Meteor, that was his big old ultimate use. And here's where BLG's comp really sucks. Because they've gone for this poke style. What, you mean the entire game? Well, look, we're, we're going to take, yeah. But BLG struggled to take the Baron. They have Fofo on this poke. They have Ezreal, who doesn't take the Baron particularly quickly. So even when you've lost Yigao at 23 minutes into the game, all five members could have potentially turned towards Baron with King and TP available. They can't even do it because they don't have the damage to take it down. Miguel will be back up on the map. Too much damage can come from JDG. So with all said and done, it's a tier two mid for that inhibitor in the bottom lane. All right, we're heading towards another dragon. 10 seconds until this one comes up. JDG, if they grab it, will be on soul point. We could have a pretty big team fight ahead of us here as BLG the ones with positional advantage right now, and they're going to have vision control as well. The question is, can they really do much here? Because JDG are here to contest. Loken has his hurricane. They want to team fight onto Meteor here. His king is on the back line, but he can't do a whole lot. Meteor going to be taken down by Yigao. One kill to start things off, and now onto everybody else. Shinmo goes down. It's a kill for Kanavi, and there's one onto the likes of Fofo as well. Jin Zhao jumps away with his arcane shift, but I don't know how much further he can run. Flashes, he keeps on running. Kanavi nearly gets him with an abscond abduct. True Shot Barrage won't do a whole bunch. JDG remain in control. All right, Lumel, you've convinced me. I'm going home tonight on playing some Bard, because that tempered fate was beautiful. Catches out several members towards the top side of this fight. Means that when Kingan's ultimate comes in towards Kanavi, it doesn't matter. All it does is position King and for Kanavi to steal away the Call of the Forge God and send it back. Watch here. Jin Zhao, Shin Mo, and Fofo all caught out. Meteor eats the entire culling, and then Kanavi says, Hold my beer, I'm gonna show you how to use this ultimate King. 
fantastic stuff going out. Foco obviously nowhere to run at the back of it. Double kill comes through for Yagao. Much more convincing performance on this Lucian mid than what we saw earlier on today. And honestly, his build path may be a little bit weird, but it's working out so far. A lot of defensive stats, and they are paying off for him. But now, as, Dra as Baron is on the map, I've got to ask you, Dagda, it's not looking fantastic for BLG. They're behind, they're struggling with this composition. What's the ray of hope for them? How do they get into a game like this? It's got to be in these tight jungle corridors where they can set up with the Maokai ult. You've got the call of the Forge God that can hit several people. Maybe you can find Fofo to get a pick as well, which could work great, or at least a good chunk of damage. But they started up this Baron. You have King and still on the bottom side of the map. They now know because of the Ezreal ult that this is going down. Kingan's TPing on up. Oh, BLG, no. They cannot let this one go without a fight. Nature's Grasp used there by Meteor. It's a pretty important ultimate for the likes of the Maokai. They're going to be happy. They force TP, they force an ult. Smart call from JDG. If they all group up there, hold on. And they get it. Oh. Wow, narrowly walks away from the paddle star. Should have emoted again. That was a missed opportunity for two <laughs> <laughs> The thing is here, that they baited out the nature scratch, they got the teleport, but JDG crucially didn't stay in the Baron pit to finish them off. The Baron was incredibly low, a bunch of Ren stacks, that was all well and good. They could have finished the Baron, but it would have meant that brilliant setup for Meteor, Call of the Forge got across multiple members, and the team fight BLG wanted to get back in. JDG are playing this so smartly to make sure there's no hope of BLG getting back in. Not to mention that, but they have complete objective control here on this Baron. They've also got a fourth Dragon coming up in two and a half minutes if they want to go for that kind of objective. Big wave in the bottom side. King has to deal with this. It'll be a 4v5 at best for BLG if they try to contest this Baron. It's a sad, sad situation for BLG here as Yagao uses the culling just to zone everybody away. True Shot Barrage goes through, but it's a little early. The Rend and the Smite will take the Baron now. 4v5, health bars are low for the likes of JDG, but Face Call pulls Lumao to safety. A magical journey to regroup with the team. Kanavi zoning from the side. This is a masterclass. Shinmo can't do anything. Infernal Chains keeps him away. And JDG walk away with the Baron. Or do they? King and once more, looking for Lumao, gets a knock up there. Can they follow up onto it? Lumao walk up, walks away. The movement speed from a caretaker shrine enough. The thumbs up comes out there. And wow, well, JDG. It's a comfortable Baron take for If there. they're not getting the thumbs up from the Colonel, I'll give them two thumbs up for that play because that was beautifully executed on the escape. The Fate's call to get Lumao in position for the bar tunnel, get through the wall into a position where BLG can come through. But even the way 705 and Kanavi position, with slows coming through, with the infernal chains to lock back Shinmo so we can't find the hook, BLG are getting dismantled in this game. We've got a couple of upgrades coming on through from the side of BLG, but I'm not 100% sure those are on the right items. There's a frozen heart on that guy. You don't have the health bar right now to go for Frozen Heart. You want something that would give you both health and armor because you're three levels behind Kanavi. You're a level behind the support of JDG. Meteor's impact on this Maokai has been some... I'm so confused as to why BLG keep prioritizing this. Place. It's the fact that they did it two games in a row. It's yeah. the fact that it didn't work in game number one, and then they're like, you know what? Let's go for the Ma Maokai pick. I'm sure it'll work this time. But, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. He's just not going to be tanky enough in these fights. Has no MR whatsoever, which doesn't matter too much because Kanavi realistically isn't going to be focusing on Meteor. But ultimately, when we take a look at the map, it's 15 seconds until this Mountain Drake comes on into the game. It's sole point for JDG. BLG have to get this Drake. And how do you? 705 has the teleport in the top lane. He can keep pushing in here. You've got to have King and group with the with the team. And BLG, it doesn't matter if you get this. They can trade that uh, potential for the terrors on the top side. Though they say that, JDG want to push their advantage right now. Yeah, JDG are going to let an objective go. What are you talking about? Three caught by the Tempered Fate. Knock up onto the entire team of JDG, though. This could be the turnaround. 
Zonia's going to come out from Loken. Canavi on the front line, doesn't have the healing, has to back away. Everybody low on the side of JDG, and maybe PLG have found the fight they needed. They're going to force JDG away. They don't get any kills, but hey, they get a dragon and the first win of the game. JDG didn't need to contest for this. Ooh! Ooh so close to hitting Konami there. You could see him panic match, but... <laughs> Just hit everything and hope we get away from that. JDG, though, needed to get away from that to begin with. They should have just pushed in that tower in the top side. They give over Dragon. They push him with the Baron Creeps in top. They can take the top in hip turret as well. And then look for that fight. Rather than coming in all disjointed, giving King and Meteor the proper setup, and having a front to back team fight with benefits BLG so much more than JDG. Well, we've been talking about this Ezreal not having much of an impact in the early game. We're now beyond the 30 minute mark. So he's certainly scaled into his strength now. He will be hitting hard from the likes of Jin Zhao. Same can be said from Fofo Zoe. He may not have an insane scoreline, but if you get a trouble bubble onto you, Loken or Yagao would be absolutely popped by a paddle star. The Meteor, we've been kind of ragging on this Maokai pick, and I think rightly so. It's not looked fantastic so far. However, he's got a lot of armor. He's going to start to go into health next, Maybe if the game can continue to go on, something magical could happen for BLG. It is going to be a while before that can come into play, though. This is the issue. We're 31 minutes into the game. You've only completed your second item on this Maokai. If you look over towards Kanavi on the opposite side, has that Zong used, the Hextech Gunblade. I'd imagine there's an Abyssal Mask coming next, but might need it a bit sooner than expected. JDG are pushing into River here. To see, I mean, there's no dragon for another three minutes, so I don't really see that being the point of contestion, especially with Baron up in a minute and 15 seconds. Trouble bubble onto Konami. Obviously, no follow up. Did JDG you... are so split here. JDG are split. Forge God not quite going to find the knock up here. Lumao gets the Tempered Fate onto Shinmo only, and now the collapse. Great play from JDG. Nature's Grasp. Across the team, face call pulls the support out to safety. Kingen going to be the focus target for now. He's tanky, and it's going to be Lumao has to flash away to the back of the fight. Kingen manages to get out with his life. Jin Zhao walks away as Kingen finally falls. BLG don't have the sustain in the fight, and now maybe looking to try and find something else off the back of it. The slow coming out. Jin Zhao looking good on the Ezreal. Death sentence is the word as Shinmo gets one, and now BLG. Try and find more. Can't quite get the paddle star. One for one. JDG need to aim for the back line in these team fights if Kanavi's going to use the call of the Forge God. If Bofo and Jin Zhao can reposition in these fights and then look to chase down after all the ultimates and all the spells are used by JDG, they're in a much better scenario. Unfortunately, even with this big minion wave that was in the bottom side, JDG won't be able to answer with the inhibitor. And once again, we have to go back to the topic of conversation that BLG in these long extended fights actually have an advantage here. You've got a lot of extended damage coming out from the Zoe, from the Ezreal, and you have a huge, huge front line. The biggest problem actually is Yigao not having that Blade of the Rune King. He needs that to get through King and to work through Meteor as well. That percentage health is so crucial in taking down the front line of BLG. Without that item being picked up, well, it looks like at all at this point, they're not going to be able to get through it as quickly as possible. It's all on Loken to deal with them, and that's not going to be the way this double AD carry composition wanted to deal with these tanks. And you know what? I hadn't believed for the majority of the game, but maybe there's a glimmer of hope here for BLG. They could find a way to get a win on the board. If these fights can go anything like that last one, if they can follow up after the fact and continue to get the poke damage down. Kanavi wants a way into the fight though. Nature's grasp across the hall of BLG, but he sacrificed a lot of his health just to get to that point. Knock up now onto Loken, cleanses. Oh, his QSS, sorry. World Ender, that's a three-man tempered fate though. Now the fight really kicks off. Knock up onto Loken, he can't do much, but now he's able to jump around the fight. One goes down and it's Jin Zhao as well. Now onto Shinmo, who will fall next. Fofo chased underneath the tower as 705 will not stop for anything. I've started to believe for PLG, but I was very wrong to do so. JD Gaming with an ace.
Never doubt the stats, Munchie Bulls. It's all about the stats. JDG come through with a massive tempered fate from Lumel, and they're looking to take the series. As soon as I say it could be game three, JDG clean house and end the game at the 35 minute mark. 13 to 4 and 2 0 on the scoreboard. JD Gaming take out 